more from you tonight. Lord, thank you because you are always speaking to us. And tonight we ask that you speak to us in simplicity and in clarity in the name of Jesus Christ. I yield myself unto you. I ask that you use me to be a blessing to your people tonight. And Lord, at the end of it all, let Jesus alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please open your Bible with me to John chapter 3. I'll be reading two verses. It's a very popular scripture. John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Tonight is a believer's meeting and I want to title this message, He Gave All. He gave all to us in his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. All he gave unto us. And uh, we should not uh, take it for granted. Pastor Biola just told us why we were, while she was welcoming uh, uh, us into the God's presence tonight. She said, we will not be tired of coming into God's presence. You are here in the morning. You are here again tonight. See the number of people who are here in the morning. See the number who are here tonight. But you are here, you are here to meet with God. You are here to obey his command. He says, do it in remembrance of him. And because you have come to obey his word, you will reap the benefit in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to let us know that uh, we must never, never be tired of coming into God's presence. That's the truth of the matter. We must never, never be tired of coming into God's presence. I saw, I saw a, a study that was conducted in a Harvard University. Harvard is one of the topmost universities in the world. You know, and they said they conducted a research work. And then when some things are done, you can be sure that all kinds of, I don't know the composition of people who are in it, but you can be sure it will, they are not, all of them are not likely to be Christians. Because there are so many various religions there. You know, so it's a group that they put together and they came out with a report. You know, the study says that church saves lives. Now, that's a report from the university. You know, it says church saves lives. And then it went further to say the research work confirms that going to church regularly have immense benefit than going to social clubs. Did you see that? That's a report. That coming to church regularly, you know, have immense benefit than going to social club. What they are trying to say, I mean, they are not just, I mean, it's just to say Jesus saves. But what they are trying to say is just that being a born again child of God is better than being in the world. Hallelujah. Because coming to church is like you are a born again Christian, you know, to the, uh, the church. And social clubs is like the world, isn't it? And uh, you know what happens in the world. People in the world, in other fact, the world itself is a risk. And uh, living in the world itself, we live by risk. In those days when we were there, I, just, I remember the kind of things we did, even as young boys, you know, not talk less of uh, what people do today. I mean, a lot of things has gone wrong in our system. I mean, in those days, well, some of us were a little bit uh, rascally, but not the kind of things we see today. You see, I was in the, I was in the boarding house, and one day we wanted to go for a party. I was in the HSC. And of course, the number of us, all of us boys that wanted to go for that party, we were many. And a friend brought only a car to take all of us there, you know. And then everybody wants to go. Once you miss that car, you are not going. And we were many. And of course, you know what we did? Not, normally, that car was to go for about three trips. But you know what? Everybody entered that car. You know, by the time, you, you see, the front seat, is designed for the driver and the passenger, isn't it? 
But we see all these taxis taking two passengers, you know. That was all, that, I mean, that's not comfortable at all. But by the time you see four people sitting down in front alone, you know what it means. You know, four people sat in front. The driver was controlling only the steering and the pedal. Don't forget there were no automatic cars then. It was manual. It was another person that was changing the gear. You can imagine that level of risk. And we went to a party like that. And we came back, everybody drunk. Can you imagine that? You know, how we got back, I didn't even know. You know, but you see the kind of risk people take. Meanwhile, our parents were at home, you know, thinking that their children are in the body house. You know, and uh, lo and behold, that was the kind, I mean, that's the kind of risk that people take in the world. I just use that as an example because that was what was peculiar to our age then. You know, but there are different ages and there are different things that were peculiar to them. You know, but that's the kind of risk people take in the world. When you take in, when you take, I mean, when you live in the world, you take risks. But when you come into the kingdom of God, you walk by faith. Hallelujah. You no longer take risks. You walk, you live by faith. Hallelujah. So that's the difference between those two. And of course, you know what, you know what they said? They gave a little breakdown. I'll just tell us a few things they said. That report says that in church, mortality rate goes down by 20%. Did you see that? Don't forget it's a research work by, academic, by people in the academic uh, section. They said you live a healthier life in church than outside. You are more optimistic. There are low rates of depression in church. I mean, low rate of suicide, low rate of divorce, and all kinds. They, I mean, they wrote, that was their report. That was what they came, uh, 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 that was what they came up with. And they said something about our children. They said children that were taken to church from the early age, in their 20s, in their 20s, they have a greater rate of wellness and happiness. Did you see that? They have a greater rate of wellness and happiness in their 20s. Now, look at the people in 20s in the world right now. Majority of these Yahoo boys you see, Yahoo Plus, that's their age bracket between 20 and 30. I mean, that's what we have majority of them fall to. That is what goes on in the world. But you see, they conclude there by saying, all these benefits they said, you cannot get them in the social club or in the community garden. In other words, you cannot get them in the world. Meaning, it is only in Christ Jesus that, can, you, that you can get all this. So the Bible says, of course, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The moment you come into the kingdom of God, then you come into all these benefits. These are benefits of salvation. These are benefits we expect to reap in Christ Jesus. If you leave the old world, if you leave the world, and you come into Christ, and your life did not change for better, there was the essence of coming. That was, that's what we are saying. So when you come into the kingdom of God, there is, I mean, God expects that there must be a change in your life. And that change must be for better in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 10, chapter 10, it says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus Christ said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. That's the benefit of having abundant life. I mean, low rate of depression, low rate of this and that. I mean, in other words, God has come, I mean, Jesus came to give us life in abundance. Hallelujah. When you are enjoying life in abundance, you won't think of suicide. Hallelujah. When you are enjoying life in abundance, you will live well. You will live healthy. You will be more optimistic because your hope will be in Christ and not in man. Hallelujah. That's what we are saying. Jesus Christ came and he gave us a new life. And that's what we are enjoying today as children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ came. He lived a sinless life. Yet, he paid for the sins of the whole world. Remember when he was to be crucified? They had to release an hardened criminal. I mean, an armed robber, a hardened criminal that, that, that was terrorizing the whole place. They had to release him for Jesus Christ to be crucified. He paid the price already for that man. And that man became a free man. No, it's not only about that man. So many people who have sinned, all, pe all those people who are committing the adultery, I mean, ritualists, uh, bribery and corruption, everywhere, he paid for their price, you know. And of course, we see what is going on in Nigeria today. 
I mean, people are just uh, so reckless about looting our treasury. I mean, just great. You can imagine in uh, seven months of this administration, some people have stolen a lot of money. You know, I mean, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And uh, this is Nigeria of today. But you know what? All these people, if they turn a new leaf, if they repent and forsake their sins and come to Jesus Christ and get born again, you know they will be forgiven. Hallelujah. Because Jesus had paid for all their sins already. That's what he has done for us when he came into the world. We, I mean, Jesus paid for all. If you have watched the Passion of Christ, you will have an idea of what Jesus Christ went through for you and for me. I mean, he, he was beaten brutally. His body was broken. His blood was shed. I mean, he was so tired that by the time he was getting to the, I mean, he was being taken to the cross to be crucified. He was weak and tired. It was that serious. He had gone through pain. He had gone through all sorts that somebody had to help him to carry the cross. He did all of that for you and I. And then he went to the cross of Calvary. He took your shame. He took your reproach. He took your sin. He took your sickness. He took your sin. He took everything that is negative in our life. Everything that the devil has orchestrated against us. Jesus Christ packed everything. He took them to the cross of Calvary. He nailed them onto the cross of Calvary. I mean, the, uh, the cross is not a place of joy. It's not a place of happiness. It's not a place of celebration. The cross is a place of shame. It's a place of pain and agony. It's a place, of, uh, it's a place that is not palatable. But he carried all of them. All of your sins, all of your problems, your sickness, everything. He carried them to the cross of Calvary. He, he endured the cross. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Why? So that you and I can be here today. So that you and I can be here to celebrate that today. He did all of that for you and I. God has been good to us. God has been merciful. You are here to obey his command to us. He said, we should remember him. We should remember his suffering. We should remember his body that was broken for us. We should remember his blood that was shed for us. We should always remember that he's always there for us. If, if for, for any reason, if any challenge comes your way, all you need to do is to remember that he has taken it to the cross of Calvary already. All you need to do is you just put it at his feet and you can be sure he will sort you out. It took a great commitment for God to release his only begotten son, to die for our sins. And it took a great commitment on the part of the son to pass through, to go through all that pain and agony just for you and I. He loved us unconditionally. He loved us for who we are. The Bible says, why we were yet sinners, he died for our sins. He loved you the way you are. He loved us unconditionally. He has an unending and consistent love for us. The Bible says, God is love. And all he has to give is love. No matter what, all that comes out of God is love. He has showered that love in us. He has loved us the way he loved his son, Jesus Christ. And he's asking us to reciprocate. He's asking us to love him back. To serve him in spirit and in truth. To serve him with all our heart. To go all out. So that was why I was saying earlier on that we, man, we must never, never be tired of serving. Because if you look at what he has gone through for what he did for us, you will know that forever your life is in him. You have to live for him or to, I mean, for the rest of your life. He died for us on the cross of Calvary. God gave us all that he had. No wonder he told us that the summary of his commandment is about love. We should love him with all our heart. We should love him with everything that we have. And the second is that we should love our neighbors, our friends, our fellow human beings. When you learn to live, in, I mean, when you learn to live by love, then you are exhibiting the trait of God. You are exhibiting the character of God. And when you, like to, when you live like that, of course, you will really benefit. You will live a good life. You will live a healthy life. I mean, things like depression and all sorts of things will be far from you completely because you are living a life of love. And that's what we are saying tonight. God has come in, in form of his son, Jesus Christ. He has paid the price. He has given us the victory. All we need to do is to take, I mean, take that victory and live in it. Hallelujah. He died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried. He was put in the tomb and the tomb was sealed. And of course, that was designed by the devil to be his end. But the devil never knew that the Lord Jesus cannot be taken by death. 
He cannot be captured by death because he is the king over death. And on the third day, he rose again. And because he rose, that becomes a turning point for you and I. And that's the reason why we can stand justified by him because we have been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Tonight, as we have come into his presence tonight, I want you to stay focused on him. Look up unto him because he is there on the throne. We were buried with him and we rose together with him. We were seated in him in, in Christ. I mean, we are seated in Christ Jesus where he is right now on the throne. On the throne is a place of uh, dominion. It's a place of joy and rejoicing. Today, the cross is empty. The tomb is empty. Jesus Christ is on the throne. We died with him and we rose with him. We are seated on the throne with him. A place of mercy. A place of dominion. A place of joy and rejoicing. A place of victory. Can you join me tonight to sing to God be the glory? To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Will his life as for sin and open the light gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This too, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the lost death till he comes. Father in heaven, we Thank you this evening, Lord, uh, for your body broken for us and for your blood shed for us. Tonight we break bread and thank you for the cup which symbolizes your blood shed for us. We have come to do this today in obedience to your word. And Lord, we receive all blessings that accompany this obedience tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we partake tonight, we partake unto life and not unto death. We partake unto success and victories in the name of Jesus Christ. We partake on into new beginnings in Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please partake in faith. And I want pregnant sisters to please come forward. 
we believe it. And Lord, thank you, Lord, because your word will be performed in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we receive grace to go all out and engage your word in our lives, in our day-to-day -day living throughout this year. Lord, we trust you, Lord, to help us, Lord, to stretch our faith to receive from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you, Lord, because we know your word that you have spoken to us for this year new beginnings 
Lord, will be fulfilled in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, every expectation is in the house tonight. In line with your word that you have spoken to us. King of glory, we ask, Lord, that to go ahead. And meet every, every of such beyond our expectations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we exalt your name. As a people, we receive strength from above. We receive strength from above. We receive help from above. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We exalt your name and we give you thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed.